Welcome, my friends, to the ultimate Phase 3 Season of Discovery Consumable Guide. This is going to be the most comprehensive guide to consumables in Phase 3. If you want to maximize your leveling speed, this guide has you covered. If you want to dominate the Blood Moon PvP event, this is the place to be. And if you want to maximize your chances at a Week 1 Sunken Temple Clear, there's no better video to watch. Consumables are the ultimate cheat code for Phase 3 performance, especially because Blizzard has given us way more than we could have expected. This time around, there are more than a dozen consumables to add to your shopping list if you want to maximize performance and leveling and PvP in the new raid. There are new consume items that massively increase your stats, new activatable items that destroy trash packs, and of course, new world buffs that completely change how you play the game. First, let's talk about what won't be available. There is a high chance that flask crafting will not be available this phase. That's because in order to craft flasks, you have to go into Skolomance. We're not necessarily sure if Skolomance will be available in Phase 3. That likely means no Titan's Flask and no Supreme Power either. Zanza, Mageblood, and the highest level oils will be unavailable as well because Zulgara won't be out yet. Other than that though, pretty much everything's on the table consumable-wise. Let's get into our full consumable guide and the written guide below the video as well. Starting things off, there's a crucial new consumable that'll be out day one and you should already be farming it. In the Northern Blasted Lands, Blood Mage NPCs offer new repeatable quests to kill and loot nearby mobs. If you obtain items like Vulture Gizzards and Blasted Boar Lungs, you can bring them back to the Blood Mages for very strong buffs. There are four consumed buffs in total to consider. Roids is an obscenely strong 25 strength, perfect for warriors. Ground Scorpog Assay is 25 agility for my hunter and Cerebral Cortex Compound brings 25 intellect to the party to keep my free seals rolling. Tanks don't get left out either with 25 stamina from the Lung Juice Cocktail. That being said, most will opt for one of the other DPS options since 25 stamina isn't that great. The real key to understanding these new consumables though is that the rewards are unique in your inventory. Still, you can pop one with a one hour cooldown and have a second in your inventory ready to go. The other thing to understand is that the farming area for Blasted Lands buffs is extremely crowded. You'll definitely want to start farming right now as quickly as you can. Alternatively, just farm a lot of gold because all the quest items are tradable. With Blasted Lands out of the way, let's talk about the best consumables for every role. After that, we're going to talk about the brand new buffs and consumables you can't afford to miss out on. Let's start with physical DPS. Green light. Starting off with one of the best DPS consumes in the game, we have Elixir of Mongoose. 25 agility and 2% crit is a must-have for any physical damage dealer. Red light. The recipe itself is about a 5% drop rate from Satyrs and Felwood, so I definitely recommend eliminated. farming yourself instead of buying it on the auction house. Green light. We've also got to talk about Elixir of Giants. 25 flat strength is just amazing for warriors. Even though the Giants recipe is a rare world drop, the materials required are very cheap. Much cheaper than the Elixir of Mongoose. Another must-have consumable for physical damage dealers is the Winterfall Firewater. What makes it so great, it stacks with your other consumes, it's 35 attack power. You can actually go and farm it right now. We made a raid group, we got about 20 of them in 3 hours. Definitely recommend it if you want to min-max your sunken temple. As for your weapons, most melee are going to prioritize dense sharpening stones. Those will be dirt cheap since dense stone is easy to get from mining. For our main consumable food, we have grilled squid. The crazy thing about grilled squid is that the main ingredient, the winter squid, it won't be available again until September. That means the price will just keep going up unless Blizzard steps in and adds a new food. And one last melee consumable that everybody forgets about is Elixir of Coalesce Regret. These cost about 2 gold on the auction house, but they give plus 1 to all stats. Plus they persist through death, which is pretty sweet. Alright, so let's talk caster DPS consumes to maximize your damage. These make a huge difference and barely anybody's talking about them. Alright, so first up we've got the Greater Arcane Elixir. These are the upgrade to the Lesser Arcane Elixir. The problem is the recipe is very rare. It comes from 50 plus mobs. Personally, I would recommend continuing to use Lesser Arcane Elixirs at least for the first couple lockouts. We've also got the Elixir of Shadow Power. 40 extra shadow damage, but the recipes camp 24-7 in Undercity and Stormwind. I highly recommend putting it all there just to snipe this recipe. Then there's the Elixir of Fire Power. It's still somehow our abyss fire consume after all this time. For frost damage, we have the Elixir of Frost Power. These are so cheap right now, so I definitely recommend stocking up early. As for our weapon buffs, Wizard Oil on paper is our best caster consume with 24 spell damage. It's possible we may not get those new recipes. If that's the case, we'd have to revert back to our trusty Lesser Wizard Oil. Then for our Abyss caster food, we have Nightfin Soup. This is a recipe already buyable in Steamweedle Port. 
Meanwhile, the fish are already available in the auction house if you want to get prepped early. Next up, let's talk about the consumables you need for maximum survivability. If you don't want to die, this is the section for you. So for our defensive potion, we're going to be going with the Elixir of Superior Defense. You can get this recipe from Orgrimmar or Iron Forge, but again, this is going to be heavily camped and very annoying to get. Another defensive potion I'm looking forward to is the Gift of Arthas. So this is going to slightly increase your raid's damage, but it's also going to give you free shadow damage. The catch is that the recipe drops from those very high level mobs in the Western Plaguelands. I'm going to wait until I'm about level 50 before I head out there. We also can't forget this is the phase for greater protection potions. Arcane, nature, fire, everything. These are really going to trivialize the raids. So you want to get these recipes as soon as possible. Personally, I'm going to be prioritizing the shadow protection potion because I think that's going to be the best value. Most likely the raid's going to have shadow damage, but it's not a guarantee. As for our health regen, we're still stuck with the mighty troll's blood potion. The major troll's blood doesn't come out until the Zul grub patch. We've also got the greater stone shield potion as well. That's going to be 2000 armor. I can definitely see some situations where that's going to be very strong in Sunken Temple. And we can't forget our old favorite Rumsy Rum Black Label is still Biss. It's separate from all the other consumables so you can stack it 15 free stamina. Alright, so let's talk about some of the game changing activatable potions. These are the items you're going to pop mid fight, mid raid, and they're going to completely turn the tide. The most important activatable consumable for me is the major healing potion. The recipe should be available in Winter Spring for launch week, so make sure to camp it. Another key way to survive is limited invulnerability potions. These make you invulnerable to physical damage for 6 seconds. That'll easily save your life in raids if you pull threat. Another lifesaver is the free action potion. These are so strong in Season of Discovery since practically every mechanic can be avoided with baps. Meanwhile, if you're a mana user, superior mana potions are going to be amazing. On top of superior mana potions though, we also have demonic runes. 1200 mana every 2 minutes is a must have for any serious caster. The one I'm excited about is Major Recombobulator. 625 health and mana on a 5 minute cooldown. And if you want to increase your damage, we've got plenty of ways to do that as well. Explosives like Dense Dynamite and Sappers are going to be amazing on trash packs. And all my melee alts are going to be running Oil of Immolation and Dragon Breath Chili to max out trash damage. Maybe the strongest activatable item though will be the Masterwork Target Dummy. If you're starting to think that engineering is going to be too strong in Phase 3, don't worry. Enchanting and Alchemy both get special bonuses as well. Alchemists get Flask of Relentless Dreams, but it doesn't work everywhere in the world, just specific locations. Enchanters, meanwhile, get the Sigil of Living Dreams. That's 30 attack power and 30 spell power. Pretty awesome. There are also new Zanza style buffs that can increase your attack power and your spell power as well. The catch is, they only work in Sunken Temple. We've also got big world buff changes to look forward to. Nomergon will no longer be available at level 50, the buff. Also, the new Fervor of the Temple Explorer, that is from Sunken Temple. Big stats, big spell power, and big crit as well. We also can't forget Songflower for even more crit and Dark Warfare for damage. Well, my friends, we've been on an epic buff and consumable journey together. By now, we should have mastered all the relevant consumes in Phase 3 so we can speed level, so we can dominate in PvP, and so we can destroy the new Sunken Temple raid. The only thing left to do is to subscribe to this channel. I've got an ultimate Sunken Temple strategies guide coming very soon. Also, make sure to check out the ultimate prep video as well. You won't regret it, my friends. Thank you so much for watching.